So you've got Call the Midwife coming. We're very excited. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Any minute now, they'll tell us when Series 10 is about to go on. Fabulous. Wow. Yeah. Because, yeah. of course, it's much, much later this year because um, of uh, COVID, because we, we only started filming in the um, end of August. Wow. So and you managed to film some social yeah. distance? Or did you all have to bubble? Or how did that work? No, it, it was... It, there were very there were major restrictions in place um social distancing and masks all the time and uh, only so many people in a room when you're filming um and had to everything had to be really opened out it was it was not easy but it was lovely to be working it'd be lovely it was lovely to be working on those scripts and it just meant um you know dinner table scenes you were all six foot apart from one another <laughs> <laughs> unless unless you didn't talk to somebody, if you talked in another direction, you could be a metre apart. Oh. Um, so there were all sorts of things like that, trying to work out how you could play intimate scenes, you know, family scenes and, um, and all of those things without actually being anywhere near somebody. Yeah, how about um, if you have to treat somebody because, you know... They're having a baby. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, the, the big thing was having the babies. <laughs> That's, that was... Um, that that was, was six feet away from the projected babies that are sort of arriving in your hands. Now, the, the, what, they, what they did was they used the mothers with their own children and with their own babies. So the new babies would come with the mothers who were able to, um, to be with their child. Oh, wow. And they would film then uh, the close-ups with you know, somebody holding uh, uh, a little, little pretend baby in their arms. And, and, and so they were just, it's a matter of cutting it all together, which, Actually, in truth, those scenes always are anyway. But in this case, one had the added uh, thing of having the real mother there. Well, I'm, I'm sure all the fans will just be thrilled that it's there and coming back. However, yes. you know, it look, might look slightly different, but I bet it won't. I bet the editing team have just been miraculous. Well, I, think, I think hopefully the stories will hold one's attention and you'll think less about the fact that um, all those people aren't giving one another a hug as they normally would. Yes, exactly. Um, We'd rather you know, have it back. It, 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 we more. were busy watching everybody else as they were filming, you know, EastEnders and stuff like that, who came up with wonderful ways of putting plastic screens between people so they could actually kiss on the oh. plastic screen, which they wouldn't see. <laughs> but we didn't do any of that. Oh, good heavens. Crikey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Well, no, we can't wait. We're big fans, so we shall oh, be yeah. following that yes. as soon as it comes out, <laughs> without a shadow of a doubt. Good, good, good. No, it is. It's lovely. It's uh, it's interesting. There are there are, there are two things, two pieces of work. I mean, I've been working since I was a child. Um, if we go if we go on doing um, Call the Midwife much longer. Sister Monica Joan could see me as a child on television. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness me. So yes, because so I, I started very young. But um, th there are two programs that I've been associated with, which have touched people in a very particular way. And one is the realm of children and the other is called the midwife. And I still get people talk to me about um, the realm of children. And the lovely thing about it is, uh, it's the association with a story that they love. So it's, it's never a kind of a, oh goodness me, oh, you're an actress, you're in the railway children. It's, it's a love for the railway children, which is, do you know what I mean? There's a different thing mm -hmm. from, from anyone being at all, um, uh, um, impressed by what one's doing on being in the film. They, they are touched by the film and they associate me with that. And therefore, it's a very, I always end up having a very nice conversation about the film or what it's meant to somebody else. You know? And that happens with Call the Midwife, is that people want to talk about the programme and their aunt was a midwife or, um, oh, they remember Poplar in those times or, you know, that there's some kind of attachment to it or some story that will, will you know, will mean something. And people want to talk about that. And I, and I love that. I think it's wonderful. No, no. Say, there's, the two, there's the two things. There's the two pieces of work where people have actually talked about the overall more than anything else. Yes, no, fantastic. Well, it's so clever that the call the midwife as well, isn't it, really? How it's well, they're good stories. They're they're Heidi good Thomas has written very imaginative um, pieces based very much on, you know, we started off with all of Jennifer Worth's wonderful memoirs, but once those stories had gone, because they, I mean, really in, in within two years, um, we'd used a lot of the stories that were in the, in the memoirs. So then it was a lot of research being done and working with the nuns and finding things out. And, and always because it's gone year by year, um, 
they've very much drawn on scientific facts from the period, social facts from the period, just seeing all those changes happen. And then turning those, you know, Heidi weaving those into at least three stories in each episode, uh, which she does very, very imaginatively. I mean, no, it's it always awesome. these wonderful pieces of drama. Yeah, very educational as well as being emotional and just beautiful to watch. And no. yeah, and quite harsh. I mean, we've done some pretty hard stories, things like thalidomide, um, oh, yes, female was... gentle yeah. mutilation, um, abuse, um, all of those things. So it's not, it doesn't kind of, it doesn't ease its way through. It's not just you know, childbirth and joy. It's it's all the hard things that come with 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 that in a in a in a community that's you know where it's not easy in Poplar. Yeah, but is it emotional for you as actors? I'm guessing just part of it. Some of the time, really oh really yeah, I mean certainly the birth scene is very emotional. I remember we work with um, a midwife, Terry Coates, who's always there through everything, making sure that we're doing everything correctly, and 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 also looking after the babies when they come in, and all and all of that. She's terribly important. But I remember asking her one time. I said, "Do you get emotional when a when a baby is born?" She says, "Oh no, no, you're you're there for the mother. You're just there to support. So you remain very strong." So kind of hung on to this idea of feeling terribly emotional doing it <laughs> because you know it's, it's childbirth it's very emotional so but I'm holding on to it and, and and just encouraging and doing all those things and then I turn around and look at her and she's absolutely in floods of tears <laughs> <laughs> you're like oh well, I see you are so wonderful I it's so wonderful. <laughs> yeah I think that you know you can't help when you're doing a scene on childbirth and you see these lovely little babies you know very young they'll oh, often be actually are they days old or something well, rarely days old they'll be a week to two weeks old but i mean i think the youngest is about mm -hmm. 10 I, 10 days would be about the youngest one we could put, would have but um oftentimes they'll have twins because the twins will end up being that much smaller so they just look smaller oh gosh oh, um, that's clever yeah so they like signing up people with twins but of course you must remember that when they sign people up for it and I'm amazed people do want to sign up and that's lovely that they do they're signing up before they have a child because wow the stories are written and then they're in pre-production and then you've got filming going on so you're having to schedule in um, a birth scene uh, so you've got to have a lineup of mothers because you, you never know when the births are going to be you know. <laughs> to fit in. So they're all rushing to push the baby out so they can be on television. <laughs> they can be on television, yeah. yeah. Crikey, wow. Gosh. I did always wonder how you managed to get such you know, early newborn babies and how the whole system worked. So That's now it amazing. makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I think it's quite a sort of network that they, they reach out to. And they, you know, obviously the um, people have to feel very secure and it's all handled terribly carefully on set. I mean, there's absolute hush and quiet and warmth for the baby and all of that. Yeah. Where, which studio do you film Call the Midwife in? Um, Long Cross, which is near Ascot. It's, oh. um, yes, it used to be a military defence um, tank testing area. It's a very bizarre studio, really. It has the M3 running through the middle of it and the Nata's house has... Um, has a racetrack going around the outside of it because they, they test um, you know, speeding vehicles, race cars on, the, on this track. Right. Uh, so in the summer months, in the past, we haven't had it recently, but in the past, um, you'd have to stop as the, tra as the cars were zoom, zoom outside. <laughs> Not quite a sort of popular scene. <laughs> no, you wouldn't realise that at all when you watch it. So that's amazing. Yeah, and, um, called the midwife. The theme that they have at the beginning immediately makes you think, oh, oh yes, all those those years ago, <laughs> you know, um, remembering again, remembering something, their memories, a joy. And at the moment, I'm working on a um, a documentary about a theatre group putting on the Tempest, and hopefully, we're going to take that to Tobago, which is a little bit like. The island and the tempest are very magical, and then they can get to see what that's about, and and it's because that's very much about history and um, culture and ideas, and you realise four hundred years on how something can still, um, you know, people remain the same basically, ideas and passions and all of that is the same. Yes. Um, so yes, that's a project at the moment. So that that stems back from being you know twenty one at the national and now doing it for these young kids. Fantastic. And it was Equius, wasn't it, that we saw you in with Daniel Ratcliffe? Oh, that's right, in the theatre, having done the film of that some time before, but playing a different role. Yeah, so that was, mm. that was, um, that was 
that was lovely to do. Poor, poor, poor Daniel Radcliffe used to have to climb up the windows and disappear out the theatre in ways that people couldn't find him because they had such a, a group of fans. I mean, the, 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 you know, the stage door was always filled with people trying to get in and trying to get oh. autographs and stuff. He's a lovely young man, going through me. Yeah. He had to go completely naked in it, didn't he? So I'm guessing all his fans yes. were diving to get there to see him. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's a T-shirt saying, I've seen Harry Potter's magic wand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. <laughs> he was still young, wasn't he, then? He was only sort of eight, was he? Eight? He was very young. And he, I mean, that was, it was very visible to do. I mean, that, I did... Um, theatre, having started in film when I was uh, 19, I guess. And it was just so scary, but I chose to do it in Farnham Theatre Company and a repertory company, you know, where people, it was going to be quiet and I could just do it on my own and learn about theatre. <clears throat> that was a first stage experience for him. And, uh, and he, it was thrown into a major West End production that was going to draw a lot of attention. And, and I just thought he was fantastic. I mean, it's yeah, extraordinary. Yeah. Very brave, yeah. Really very good, and very, very grown brave. up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's done that all, always with his career, actually. He seems to have really taken steps. He's always tried to do something different all the time. Oh, good on him. Because sometimes children actors can lose their way a bit, can't they, for being so famous so soon. So hopefully if he's got that attitude, he'll just keep going for decades. Yes. Like yes. Great career, which would be amazing. Yes. Oh, Jenny, well, thank you so much for your time. It's just been an amazing and educational yes, chatting to you. It's just been Thank you very brilliant. much. And, and um, we'll catch up again. And I'm so glad you called. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you, you so much.